George Fashive, hey, man, good to see you. Welcome back. Really good to see you, Ross. It's um, been a while. It's been a while. It has. Um, I used to come back at least like, you know, once a year. Um, I used to be with the the physios a lot, the, the the trainers. I used to do some work with them here when I was like playing. Like Yeah, Malonis. Alex was here. A um, couple of the other guys. And, uh, and then... I think since since I uh, went to Israel, I, I haven't been back. Right. Uh, yeah. It's 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 neat. That's something you see with the Timbers, and I don't want to just throw names out there, but I've seen plenty of Timbers that have served the club well, and the club have looked after them come back, and you know to get training to get looked after. I didn't realize you're doing. Hey, I've bumped into you, and I remember it was a couple of years ago. I'll get into that in a second, but that's neat. So you feel like it's it's a home to always come back to that you'll get looked after. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, obviously, I love it here. Love the club. Um, had some amazing moments with the club. Unforgettable. Um, so every time I came back, it felt good. Um, you know, I made a decision to go overseas and play and try other things. But um, but this has always been kind of home. And yeah. And, uh, yeah. You, you, OK, <laughs> we get we got some catching up to do, don't we? So. Yeah, sure. When you went overseas, you know, yeah. the, the last let's get into this because I was watching the video back today and, you know, I felt a part of the ride. Right. I wasn't in the locker room with you guys, but getting to 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 be the next best thing across outside of the team, how close I was with the guys, with the media to feel a part of it. 2015 was so special. And I watched back the night and you singing on stage. And I chatted to Nat Borchers this morning. I said, Nat, that was a special time. Remember at the moment and George getting the mic. Right. Take, take, take me through that night. Take me all about the song where that came from. We, we you know, I know you and Adi had something going on, but that was amazing. Um, man, this song was a song that uh, that I learned in in France. I was maybe 13, 14. And uh, we had won a national championship uh, back then. We had a um, really special team as well in uh a very good coach and the coach taught us that song and we and we um, he used to sing that song before and after every big game and it was just a song where we felt like the energy was so strong um, I couldn't explain to you why and how or even where it comes from I have no idea I just remember the feeling we had after or during the song and after and and how you know pumped up we'd be and and how special um, you know the energy was uh, in the locker room, on the pitch. And uh, and so uh, when we won, which 2015 was, you know, an amazing year for, yeah. for the club, for me, uh, for everyone, I think, here. And uh, and I just had the idea, like, hey, look, man. I, I felt like a kid at the time, you know. when you went, <laughs> I really felt like a kid. And then and then uh, it went through my mind and said, look, I'm, I'm going to just try this. And maybe they'll maybe they'll feel this too, you know. And they certainly did. And they certainly did. What was, you know what? I, I feel like the, the, there's there's moments in 2015 that I want to relive. And that is one in front of the Timbers Army. You singing and Sean McCauley singing in front of the crowd. What was that like getting, oh, however however many thousand were in front of you to sing with you? That's what I'm saying is, um, I, I don't know. I, I uh I myself felt like a little kid again, you know, I felt so excited. I felt it was a dream. Mm -hmm. It was, um, and, uh, and I kind of felt like if I can, if I can get people on board with this, you know, and, uh, and share this, uh, because obviously like when I, when I, when I, uh, when I brought it up, it, it was going through my mind that, um, you know, way back when, when we won, when we were kids, it was going through my mind that this, this was special and, you know, it's just the same thing. It felt like the same. It felt like, a, you know, a, a championship. People are like, you know, they're ready to party, you know, so let's party kind of thing. And <laughs> it wasn't planned. You know, the championship wasn't planned. I mean, nothing was planned. It was just it kind of just came off my heart. And that was it. Let's uh, let's keep with the nostalgia right now. O outside of that, how special was that day, that parade, because obviously things happen quickly afterwards and players move on. We'll, we'll get into to that. And you've built so much with so many players and what you've achieved will be talked about, you know, decades from now. 
And for that, all of a sudden, it's it's as though you don't get to let it sink in with all the people that you achieved it with. But yeah. for that day, I've never chatted to you since. What was that day like to celebrate? It was a dream, man. I was with the guys. Um, we were all over town. Uh, <laughs> in and out of restaurants, celebrating. People in town were celebrating with us. Obviously, everybody at the club was excited. And, you know, we were all, it was it was magical, you know, all of it was, it was a whole week. I, I can't remember if I slept much that week, you know, it was, <laughs> it was and, and we were getting ready to go home, you know, it was the last game of the, of the season. So, you know, we had a lot of foreign people who were um, ready to travel, um, ready to visit some family and, you know, ready to get out of town. And, um, and I think most of us just stayed for like a week or a couple of weeks um, after that game in Columbus and, yeah, it was uh, it was unreal. <laughs> so yeah. enough to say, safe to say, the partying kept going for those who stayed around yeah, for a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, for sure. I mean, after after ten days, we were kind of like, "Hey, it's time to maybe <laughs> take a break." <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah. understand it. a special special group, and um, for you, you you decided to pursue opportunities, and and for you, there was an itch, and you, you headed off to. To Denmark, Israel. Uh, after that, talk us talk us through your experiences since we last saw you. Well, um, I mean, it was incredible, man. It was uh, it was such rich uh, experiences, and I, I don't even know where to start. So when I first uh, left, first of all, I wasn't supposed to leave. No, <laughs> I you went. Wanna- I went on a training stint with this uh, this Danish team, right? And uh, and I found out when we were in preseason that I guess they liked me and they needed a player at my position and to come in and play. And I was really excited about it because I had not really played professional anywhere else in the States. Mm-hmm. Right? And, um, and having family in France and this and that, I thought I'd be closer. I thought I would um, – and Europe is, is very fast. It's uh, – you know, you can play in uh, in any small or big country, and it's really interconnected. Like it's, yeah, you can play in Denmark, play against Swedish, German teams. I mean, it goes really fast there, and uh, and I thought it was a great opportunity to pursue. Uh, I spoke to um, Gavin and Caleb at the time, um, and they agreed to to let me go and and try it out, and uh, so I went there. A little bit of a culture shock. It's very quiet there, and. Uh, and they do things very differently, I'd say. Um, you know, different mentalities and whatnot. So it was a bit hard the first six months, but then afterwards, um, it went pretty well. You know, I remember having a, an injury that kind of set me back um, that first year. I came back to Portland to um, to actually get treated for it. Right. And, uh, but after that, it was it was great. I learned so much uh, on and off the pitch. Um, I learned different languages. Um, I learned different people, um, cultures, and it was just, it was really good. Um, I think I grew a whole lot over there and, um, came 2018. Uh, I remember being close to, to signing back in the league, uh, with, uh, FC Cincinnati. Oh, well, I was, yeah, because I want to. I, yeah, I, I know a couple of clubs. There were rumors floating around. I thought George right. Vashive comes back into the league. Colorado was one of the rumors floating around as well. And I thought, what a smart signing. Who's ever thought about getting George back? That's a smart signing. Yeah. So FC you. Cincinnati, though. Yeah, because we had uh, some of the boys went there, you know, Adi, Elvis. Um, felt like uh, some type of connection there with uh, some former teammates of mine. So I thought it would happen, and it didn't. And um, I got a call from a coach in Israel. So what type – I know what type of player you were when you were here. And for the Timbers, you know, the the prototypical box-to-box midfielder, you'll have a strike at one end and then you'll put in a tackle on the other end. Right. Is that the type of player you, you remained as you went overseas? In Denmark, yes. Uh, and I would say that in, in Denmark I added, uh, uh, I added some uh, – a tactical dimension to my game where they, they really taught me because they're um, the game's not as open, you know, teams are very compact teams are, I mean, through 90 minutes is the block is stays the same kind of thing, you know, 
Um, you might have like two, three minutes in the game, the last in the last five minutes where the game opens up, where a team might be desperate for a goal or this and that. But most of the 90 minutes, it's really hard to break a team down there. Um, you always have backup. You know, you, you, you'll you dribble one player. There's a guy right after. I mean, it's it's very tight. And so when I was playing in the midfield, I, uh, I'd say I simplified my game a lot. They asked me to basically do what you said, just just run, just always be in the good spots. You don't need to touch the ball as much as uh, you think. You know, to shoot, you need two touches. And to tackle, you need one or two touches as well. <laughs> you know, tackle, release, and get, you know, get yourself on the other side of the pitch and, you know, participate in the, in the, in the attack. Uh, we had um, – Obviously, I had a number six next to me that was uh, more in charge of organizing um, uh, the game positionally and with the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had a Korean uh, friend who played a uh, number 10 mm -hmm. uh, who was, you know, excellent on the ball and who, who kind of gave us air when we needed. Um, so everybody knew their role really, really well. Um, so they were able to um, to show me how to use my uh, my my qualities, which were athletic um like i was good in the anticipation of of plays and uh, and i was really and i became really good at focusing on what i was good at you know rather than uh, kind of being all over the place how did you get back here how did that start then it's obvious that your relationships maintained and you, yeah. you remain close with everybody but so going there started with a training opportunity right. and you ended up staying no and i came back for preseason. And they called and said, "Hey, uh, we want him back." Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea. Like, I, I was, um, we were in Tucson, and um, I was signed with the Timbers for another year. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Viborg, they paid money for you. I know they. There was a transfer yeah. fee, of course. Yeah, but they, um, I don't know. Apparently, they got, um, they got rid of. Uh, I don't know if they sold a player in my position. I don't know what happened there, but, um, but they called like two, three days uh, um, from the, before the transfer window closed and said, hey, can we get uh, George back? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I kind of didn't know what to say, but I, you know, I was kind of like, I have nothing to lose kind of thing, you know? To give it a go. And now the Timbers have turned around and said, we want George back. Yeah, and right. you're back. How did that come about? What was the first conversation? Who was, was uh, it Gavin that you chatted to? How did this all come about? Yeah, I, kinda, I first came in and um, so Gabriel picked me up. Um, I had not met Gabriel before. Um, really the cool player guy. liaison, the player um, yeah. coordinator. Yeah, and admin helps out Spencer Childs. Right. We had a. I was speaking with Spencer beforehand, and I knew Spencer obviously, and so uh, we kind of went over who was still here, who had gone, um, and uh, and it just felt, you know, like home. It felt like I already knew what was going on, and uh, obviously a lot of major improvements in the facilities, and uh, you know. Some things have changed, but that's uh, you know that's expected. You, you've seen the you've seen the facilities then. Amazing, yeah. So, yeah, so training facility yeah. and have you seen the stadium? No, I haven't seen the stadium yet. Okay. The okay. training facility is world class. It's um, see in Europe, like only the top top clubs have this type of uh, facility and uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, over it's strange over there, but. Um, it makes sense where smaller teams don't have enough uh, in their budget to uh, provide this type of uh, infrastructure for the players. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I came back and uh, everybody was nice. Uh, I saw Nick, I saw Tai Chi, you know, the guys that I spent every day with uh, back then. So, yeah, really natural. Um, it was cool. Yeah. The, the athletic trainers, the sports right. science guys, Nick Malone is Tai Chi. Right. Um, wait, yeah, and, and let's get into the, the name. I mean, when you're talking about your position, you're talking about the number six beside you, one side, the number 10, the other. Do, do I need to reintroduce you to a guy named Diego Chara and a Diego Valeri who you could be in the middle for? Obviously, Eric Williamson has done very well to start this year, but yeah. the guys that you know, Blake Bodily, you played a little bit with now. Yeah, a little you bit. know, he's in Dairon Espria. Those are the the four guys who I, I don't think I'm missing anybody, but familiar faces for you. Sam Uni, Kit Man. I've got yeah, his kit yeah, in the back yeah. of my little studio right here. <laughs> Sammy, it was really good to see everyone. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't seen all of the players yet, just because I was uh, isolated from the the team. I have to pass a few COVID tests, and uh, 
and uh, and I'll be set. But um, but yeah, I, I know the team. <laughs> Gio, have you had a chance to chat with Gio and the coaching staff yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a chat with him. Uh, really nice guy. Um, he was, uh, you know, he was, uh, I liked his energy. So uh, it was my first time meeting him. And um, it was brief. You know, he said, we'll talk more after uh, you're back with the group. And I feel good. You feel good.